Good evening. Hey, how's everybody going? Going, what am I saying? <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> it's just not that yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long day. Hey, thanks everybody for all the Father's Day well wishes. Really appreciate them. We had a pretty great day. We did, for sure. So today, I thought we would talk about clothing. I think it's pretty... My clothing. Grandpa Shark. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty... Maybe not my clothing. <laughs> I think it's pretty common if you have a child with autism that at some point in time you're going to have a clothing issue. Uh, I'm trying to think of how old Craig was when he started to not want to wear clothes. Mm. Three or four... It seems to me like I was about four years old. Four. Yeah, it leaves me. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. There came a time when Craig decided he didn't need clothes anymore. So, I mean, it's not such a big issue at home. I mean, he would leave his underwear on. But it was an issue if we went somewhere, if we went to someone's house and he just started to strip down. So, we would let him take his shirt off. Um, cause he wasn't that old. But to keep his pants on, we would have him wear jeans with a belt. Because believe it or not, back then, Craig was skinny. And he had to wear a slim size jeans. Okay. And he actually needed a belt. So the belt, that was our answer to keep Craig's pants on. He didn't like that belt. <laughs> no. And I don't know. It seems like he was about seven years old when Craig decided it was he would wear pajamas at home. And I remember when he, <laughs> the funny thing is. Oh, I remember the pajamas. Right? Yeah, what made him decide to wear pajamas was we got these pajamas for Stephanie that were Lucky Charms. And somewhere we have a picture of that. And it was actually like a little tank top thing with shorts. And Craig wanted to wear that. And he actually had that on. Um, so we went out and luckily at that time there were cereal themed pajamas for boys. So I remember we found him tricks and Lucky Charms. Cheerios. Yeah. And he was more than happy to wear those at home. Lucky, did you, you said Lucky Charms. Yeah, Lucky yeah. Charms. Those were his favorites by far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he loved those. And after that, I don't know, he wore those for several years. Yeah, about but it, warm out. Yeah, and then eventually we couldn't find him in his size, but we just switched over to where he would wear shorts and a t-shirt at home. And that's why... Just like athletic shorts, thin athletic shorts is what he usually wears for them. And, and we still call him pajamas to this day. Right, because as soon as he gets home from anything, he switches back into his pajamas. And that's why in a lot of these videos, you'll see Craig wearing different clothes throughout the day because I keep telling him, no, change back into your regular clothes if we're going to do a video. But sometimes... It's not worth the argument, and I just let him wear the pajamas. Uh, yeah, usually his pajamas, he doesn't store them in his closet on hangers or anything. He'll throw them in... Um, he has a drawer. Yeah, he's got them in his drawers. Ah, oh, yeah, he doesn't have them in that chest anymore. Mm -hmm. But naturally, he doesn't fold them up, put them in. He just chucks them in. So, mm -hmm. of course, they're all wrinkled up and everything. So, Mama doesn't like that kind of shirt. In. <laughs> well, and also... We have to watch him because he forgets and he wants to wear the same pajamas like three days in a row. Yeah, so if I'm not days. paying attention and don't catch it, yeah. which happened today, I noticed you had that on yesterday and I told him he needed to change. And oh, that, that was his that was his regular shirt, though. He no, he had on that um, blue when I got in Florida that said Orlando this morning. Oh, that one. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Well, then he came down with a shirt on that he had worn yesterday. Yeah, he had done his laundry and he wore it yesterday. So, so he yeah. was not happy. <laughs> and we had a little mini melt. He, he didn't get terribly upset. But I did try something today that was suggested. I asked him how he was feeling. And honestly, I've never really thought to ask Craig. It's always just, I feel like, a panic to get Craig to stop having, you know, to get him to stop, to get, you know get things back to normal. So today I actually did ask him, I said, Craig, what are you feeling? And he said, I feel overwhelmed. And that made me stop in my tracks and really think about things. So my strategy, I think changed. It was not so much, okay, let's get over this. It's what can we do to change this? What can we do to help you not feel overwhelmed? So at that time he was also wanting to take a shower. So 
instead of going on with the video, I said, okay, let's go upstairs, take your shower, and let's just wait till you feel better. And that's what he did, and everything went better after that. Unfortunately, that's not always an option if you're not at home, but it did work that time. And hopefully if we can do things like that at home, eventually when we're away from home, I'll be able to identify what's going on and find a way to get him out of that frame of mind. Because it's really, getting him out of that frame of mind. Because once he gets into it and he's overwhelmed or panicked or whatever he's feeling, it takes him a while to get back out of that. Yeah, a lot of times you, you know, we think, we gotta get Craig out of this, of the scenario he's in. What's, you know, what's triggered him is physical. Well, a lot of times it's, it's not that much physical. The physical is what triggered it but things are just building up inside of him. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you have to find a way to get him out of it emotionally. Someone actually left a great comment and they said that they also have autism. And to them, it's like a dam and the water just keeps, the water, which is their emotions and their feeling of being overwhelmed just keeps building and building and building until they have to let some water out of the dam to relieve the pressure. And I was like, that's yeah. a really good analogy. And I would imagine that's what it is like with Craig too. When you don't know how to let your emotions out or you can't cope with them like many people can. I don't well, like to say that. the word normal. Yeah. But. We noticed that with Craig, like if it's a situation where, uh, if it was a younger child that they want to cry. Right. And that Craig gets so emotionally distraught that he, can't cry mm -hmm. he needs to cry mm -hmm. so that's when he's got those those go-to videos and everything that he'll watch that will like make him cry or s certain songs you know that he thinks mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. and Craig's always he yeah. like he likes to sing the blues yeah. when he when he's upset about stuff and mm -hmm. and you and he usually feels quite a bit better after he does that. But which, you, even that, you got to give him a few minutes yeah, after. Which convinces me that in any situation, we need to try and find a way where he can release like that. Like, we can't just stop it. We have to find a way that he can release that. I love that analogy of the dam. Yeah, well, it's like, I mean, it's, it's also like up in uh, Yellowstone, all the geysers and everything. Well, they've got a release on a certain point all the time. Problem is, is if those geysers don't release, you know, anybody knows anything about Yellowstone, there's a huge volcano sitting underneath that. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't release pressure, it's going to release it a lot harder. And that's how it is. I, I believe with Craig, if he can't, he, if he can't constantly pop some of that out, then he's going to blow big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, another thing I wanted to say about clothing is I remember. Uh, quite a long period of time where Craig would not wear long sleeves. He wore short sleeves and uh, actually even now he doesn't want to wear long sleeves. He wears short sleeves year round. But if we had to, we could get him to wear and he'll wear a jacket. But I remember in I don't school, like long sleeves. well, neither do I get too hot, but <laughs> Craig just did not like the feeling of it. And I think probably that had to do with why he didn't want to wear clothing for a while, because if something's annoying you, you want to take it off, um, but most of us know we can't just go around taking our clothes off <laughs> unless we're at home maybe, but not in public. And Craig, he just didn't, he didn't get that yet. Luckily he gets that today. It didn't really, I feel like that period of time, maybe it's just because it's been so long ago, but I don't feel like that seemed like such a long time. It really helped with the pajamas though, because even if we were going to relatives or we could still let him wear the pajamas. And we stopped having him wear jeans many years ago. He just wears athletic shorts or athletic pants. Too restrictive to him. Mm -hmm. I think they would just irritate him. I think he'd want them off all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's pretty much all of my yep. thoughts on that. Um, I'd love to hear your stories and what solutions you found if you had the problem of your child not wanting to keep their clothes on. And so we have a pretty fun video after this, uh, Father's Day episode. Craig and I make stromboli and soup italiano. 
and Stephanie, Craig, and Bennett are all together for a little taste test and little talk around the table. And I think you're going to enjoy it. And Craig reads a really fun book tonight too. So we'll go on with the rest of the video and we'll see you tomorrow. And when we will be on our road trip to the Amana colonies. Hi, I had one more thing I wanted to add today. Yesterday we had the question from someone that their son was having a lot of trouble with bugs and flying insects and he was just terrified of them and they were wanting to know if we had any suggestions. I did, I'm sure maybe other people have responded to, but I did see one response that I thought was really good and what this person said was that they had also had that same problem with their son. So what they did was, first of all, they talked to him about bugs and why the earth needs them. And then they also equipped him with a roll-on applicator of uh, peppermint oil that he could apply himself as needed, which helped to give him a feel of an empowerment over the bugs. And also, uh, peppermint is also known to have calming effects, so that was a plus. And lastly, they said they came up with a plan of what he could do if there were bugs around and he was afraid. They were campers, so they told him that if he sees bugs and he's afraid, that he can come inside the camper. And also, he can get mom and dad and talk to them about it and have them help him. They said for him, knowing the facts and having a plan worked really well. So I thought that was really good advice and I hope that it helps someone that is dealing with the same issue. And now we'll go on with the rest of the video. Hello everybody, this is Jeff Craig Viver here and today we're making soup for Stromboli. It's called Soup Italiano. Right. So this is a pretty easy soup to make. We, we got the recipe many years ago from Hickory Farms when they were handing out samples. And basically we are just going to dump all of these things into a crock pot. So um, I don't think we're gonna use that can of soup, Craig. Let's try, let's just do these two first. So first- Don't we use this anymore? Yeah, we won't use that one. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I should have left it there. Um, the first thing, Craig, why don't you add those two cans of soup to the crock pot? There's nothing but soup. Okay, so we have that soup in the crock pot. And the next step is the ragu, which I'm probably going, let's see if you can get it open. Okay, okay. Oh, good job. Dump this? Yep, just pour that right in there. And then we'll pour the other thing of ragu in there. Funny story about ragu, when Bennett was little, one of the few things he would eat was spaghetti with yeah. ragu. Oh gosh, I'm sorry I said the, spaghetti, the S word. Um, I'll say pasta with ragu. And we went to a fancy Italian restaurant and Bennett ordered spaghetti with yeah. ragu on it. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I won't say that word anymore. Oh, it's almost not big enough to hold all this, what? but we don't have much else to add. So add that vegetable soup mix. Okay. And then a bowl of chopped up pepperoni. All this? Mm-hmm. I just cut the pepperoni with a scissors. Um, you can also buy those small pepperonis too. All right, so now we need to stir it. Like what? That's fine. This one? Yep, that works fine. Get it all mixed up in there. <laughs> and after it cooks, 
Yeah. For a while, we will add a cup of Parmesan cheese. And as Craig said in the beginning, we always pair this with stromboli, which is another recipe we will be making in just a little bit. This is our Father's Day lunch. Oh, it's time to start making the bread dough for the stromboli. Oh, no, the first thing that, so I make this in my bread maker. I just use the dough setting and that works really good. Some people um, use frozen bread dough or you could make your bread dough by hand if that works for you. This is really easy for me. The first step would be to add the water, and that's one cup of water. I have pre-measured ingredients because you have to get this pretty precise. Right here? Mm -hmm. Pour in one cup of water. All right, the next step, put the flour in, and we have three cups of flour pre-measured. And then next, we need one teaspoon of salt. Tablespoon? One teaspoon. Does that say teaspoon or tablespoon? Let me worried for a minute. Yes, it's one teaspoon of salt. Is this one enough? That looks good. And the next ingredient is we have two tablespoons of butter cut up into small chunks. And Craig will pour that in. And the next thing Craig is putting in is three tablespoons of sugar. One. There's one. Does that look good? Yep. Two. Three. And three. All right. And the very last, oh, well, there's two more things. Uh, I need you to add that packet of yeast that's laying there. Do you see that? And yep. you will empty that into the... And then we have one last secret ingredient. So my secret ingredient is minced onion that we add to the bread dough. And I think that mm. gives the dough a really wonderful flavor. So we'll pour that in. Should I taste the minced onion? You can taste one. What do you think? Mm. Tastes good. All right, then we just shut the lid. And let's see, we need to press start. And then we need to take it to menu. We need to take it to number seven is, yes, for dough. And then press start again. Leave this right. and in one hour and 30 minutes, we will take it out of there and roll it into stromboli. So now we need to prepare the ingredients that go into the stromboli. So the first thing, here are the ingredients. We will spread some mustard on the dough and then we are going to grind up these meats. Mm -hmm. and they will go into the stromboli along with some cheese. So do you want, let's put some meat into that little food processor. Okay. Okay. Keep adding it and I'll tell you when there's enough. There you want. Okay, here have is ham and salami hard salami okay you put the lid on craig knows how to do this need some help there you go so let me put this that. is what it looks like when it's all ground up and we will continue to do that with the rest of the ham and the salami and set that aside until the dough is ready so the dough is finished and ready to roll out i've divided it into two pieces and now I'm going to have Craig roll it out. Okay. Okay, so we've rolled the dough out and you want it to be pretty thin. And the next step is, Craig, I want you to squirt some mustard on that. Yep, good job shaking it. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now can you spread that out with the knife? See if you can do that. We just want to coat the dough with a layer of mustard, a thin layer. Mm -hmm. I've got the mustard on. If you don't like mustard, 
you can skip this step, but I think the mustard really adds to the flavor. And so next, Craig, I want you to add some of, the, put some of the meat on there and spread it out. And we have a mixture of salami and ham. This is one of my oldest recipes. I actually, the first time I had this, I used to go to a Christian college and we had a small, it was a small one. And we actually had a chef mm -hmm. and he would make stromboli and it was everyone's favorite. So after I was out of college and married, I just figured out the recipe for myself. It's not exactly like it was when I was in college, but I think I like it better. I like, I re we really like this recipe. This is definitely my most requested recipe. I like to bring it to people if they have a baby or if they have a special time where Ooh. I want to bring them a meal, this is usually the one that I will bring along with you the soup italiano. Cheese, I like to use this mixture of mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, and mm. asiago. Okay, Craig, you wanna add a little more meat to that? More? Mm -hmm. So add a little more. And then I want you to press it in with your hands. And this is what I do to get a lot of meat in there. You just keep layering it and then pressing it I press it harder than that but press it with your hands so you get lots of meat in there I'll probably add just a little more over here all right now you want to add some cheese to that We have added most of the package of cheese and the next step is to roll it up just like you would roll up cinnamon rolls you want to try to start rolling it up craig yeah we'll see if you can start it and then i'll take over yeah just like that keep rolling and tucking you're doing a good job okay so now we've got it rolled up yeah you've got the idea then we will seal the edges i'm going to kind of show them how to pinch the edges pinch yeah, you just pinch the edges closed all the way around so you have no open seams. Good job. So we got it all seamed up and we have it on the pan. Now we're going to repeat the same process with the next piece of dough. Actually, it makes a pretty big loaf and this recipe makes two loaves. So it's enough to feed quite a few people. This one loaf will probably feed all six of us or seven of us for lunch. And then we'll have another loaf for leftovers. Now we have both loaves ready and we will put it in the oven at 350 for approximately 30 minutes. And when it's almost done, I will brush it with some butter. Right. Oh, what is this? It's for you, Dad. What is it? A Father's Day present? Yes. Ooh. Am I gonna yes. be? Am I gonna be happy? Yes. All right. You gotta watch Dad open his ah. present, Craig. I can't remember how to open. Can you help me? Oh, it goes like that. Okay. Let's see. I'm not gonna look. Let me see. Is it garden tools? No, it's <laughs> M Ms. M Ms. All right. Correct. Um, Absolutely yeah, those correct. Are really good. Dad's favorite kind of M&Ms. What kind of M&Ms um, are they? Uh, the caramel cold brew. Yeah. So I've never seen I like that any before. Kind of candy that tastes like coffee. What? And the Hershey <laughs> Special Dark Bar. I've liked these since I was a man. I was a little bitty kid. I used to like these because the mini packs and you get them. Nobody liked the Special Dark. Craig's so I get them all. <laughs> Craig's done. All right. Well, thanks, Craig. Joe loves dark chocolate. I do like dark chocolate. I used to actually get in, when mom wasn't looking, I used to get up into her baking chocolate. Does anybody remember, old enough remember that? It used to be in little, like, foil things. And you break off little pieces and of it. it tasted and, horrible. And I'd, I'd break that <laughs> off and I'd eat that. So <laughs> there's, there's no dark chocolate dark enough for me. I, I think like most it. kids back then tasted it, but most of us didn't like it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I kept, I kept eating it. But I mean, I used to, I liked I liked all sorts of weird things. I liked Pepto Bismol. I liked the, the, 
flavor of that. You used to pretend I'd have a stomachache every once in a while, it's like it has a Pepto Bismol. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't like the tablets, only the fluid. <laughs> Here's a little video of the finished product. And I will show you a cut piece in a little bit after it cools. Here's the soup. I put some shredded Parmesan on for Craig. And here's a look at what the stromboli looks like inside. Are you ready to eat, Craig? No, one or two. Um, just one to start, okay? Hey, okay, Craig. This is how Craig likes to eat it. He dips it in the soup. How's it taste? Good. And if you're going to pick a piece, always pick the end pieces because they're almost like a hand pie. Mm. And Craig's <laughs> like, I'll take that. He wanted two pieces. <laughs> it's pretty delicious, isn't it? How's that cookie, baby? Wow, that's sweet. Are you a cookie monster? Josie, can you say yummy? And you say num, 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 num. So I'm too busy eating this frosting. Libby, can you say num, num, num? Num, 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 num. So today we have Craig's brother Bennett here for our taste testing, as well as Stephanie and what's your name again? Olivia. Yeah, Olivia. <laughs> so Craig, what's the first chip we're going to test? The Cuban sandwich. Okay, you going to open it? You can go ahead and try it too, Bennett. <laughs> Sometimes it takes more than one. Craig, what do you think? Tastes like a Cuban sandwich, Mama. Well, what flavors do you taste? Craig? It's meaty. What flavors do you taste? Meaty. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. Okay, so Stephanie says it tastes like what kind of meat? Salami? Yeah, I was thinking like a salami and pastrami, but like mm. weird it, because Roast it, beef? because they take because it tastes so out of place in the chip. The first thing that comes to like the forefront for me is like they kind of have they put a little bit of like the I'm looking like yeah, it looks like there's is that a, no, it's like pickle? a pickle. Okay, it's a pickle. I'm tasting. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's mainly a pickle. A little I, bit I, of first dill. I thought, at first, I thought it was like a lettuce and like a <clears throat> mayo or something, but I guess it being a pickle makes more sense. So. I mainly taste that. It, it tastes like uh, it tastes like it just tastes like yep. bread yep. that has like had that pickle on it for a while, you know. It's got the <laughs> remnant of a pickle taste there. <laughs> that <laughs> is very. It's like when the juice is soaked into yeah. the bun. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. But it still has the pickle flavor. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> Do, you, <laughs> Do you like them, Craig? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so out of ten, one being the worst and ten being the best, how do you rate it? Five. Okay, that's good. Yeah, you know, that's fair. That's, that's fair. what you I'd think too. Well. <laughs> okay, so I would not eat these. They're not a favorite. It's clear. Okay, Craig, you want to open the next ones? That's a lot of ones. He decided just to get it over with the first try. It's a BLT. I'm tasting you. I'm probably gonna mainly taste the lettuce, but let's see. Nope. What do you taste, Craig? Be a uh, bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. <laughs> what do you taste the most? You gotta try again. <laughs> See? <laughs> it tastes good. It tastes good? Okay. All right. Anyone else want to weigh in here? Um, it kind of tastes like sour cream and stage. onion or barbecue. Yeah, I'll just say I really just taste the barbecue chip is all. I couldn't decide which one it was. Yeah. I wouldn't really say it tastes like a BLT. It doesn't like because there's bacon flavored chips and it doesn't even taste like that. That's weird. I figured yeah. bacon would be the strongest mm -hmm. flavor yeah, or a know. smoky kind of a I taste. Don't like bacon, so. yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm glad I'm glad it doesn't taste like the bacon chips because those, those are rarely good. Guys, give me the Okay, so what are your thoughts on these chips? <laughs> well, I can't even get you in. I am. Can you come around here? I don't really catch any flavor out of them, really. Yeah. I honestly catch like what's the... Yeah. The BLT or the Cuban? The Cuban. Or the Cuban. Cuban. <laughs> Cuban. 
Libby likes these chips. You like them for Libby? Good. They must be good if Libby likes them. What's it taste like? I almost taste cheese. She's really trying to think of it. No, you don't want to tell me. Okay. Will you tell okay. me? See, that's what I thought I was going to give away. Well, Craig, so for these, on a scale of one to ten, what do you give them? Ten. Oh, you really like those. Bennett? Uh, a six. Like, I think uh, the B, the name BLT is a lie. They don't taste like that at all. <laughs> but they're kind of like, if you remarked to them, it's like... Redu reduced seasoning barbecue. Yeah, so I was going to say, like, less barbecue-y <laughs> yeah. which I prefer. Barbecue light. Yeah, barbecue seven. light, yeah. I'm only knocking off points because, yeah, it's just, it's not BLT. But, yeah. Yeah. but they taste good. But I don't like bacon, so. Yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not bad chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, get, I get a little bit of that bacon taste on it. Fake bacon, it's always on the aftertaste. Mm. All right, so Craig, can you tell me your favorite memory of Bennett? Yeah. What is it? I was hoping you were just gonna say yeah. <laughs> Taking Bennett the cans for recycling. Oh, Bennett used to take you to recycle the cans. I did too. There used to be a Craig and Bennett day mm -hmm. back in the day. Yeah, well, what else did you do? Things. What did What did Bennett get you to try that you had never tried before? I don't know. Do you remember Bennett? Yeah, I got him to try. Uh, I got him to try the Dorito Loco tacos from Taco Bell. Actually, yeah, I use the I use the rationale that he likes ground beef and that he uh, no, likes Doritos. No. So uh, I, I just put those two together and it, it clicked yeah, for him. It was. Oh, okay. And also, I think you're the one that got him to try walking tacos at your graduation party. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I necessarily got him to try them. I think it's just that they were at my graduation party because I don't think I was really there to egg him on to try them. But I mean, mm -hmm. they, they were in front of him and he ate them. So, you know, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best memory of Craig? Uh, I was actually going to say, I would actually kind of forgot about the rest of the stuff until I brought it up. But I was actually going to say, uh, this is like kind of an older one, but back uh, way back when we were younger, uh, he, he used to, and I think he probably still does. He watched a... Uh, a lot of this, like this genre, this, some of your viewers might have heard about these. There's a, there's a genre of video called YouTube poops, mm. which oh. are yeah, they're <laughs> still does. They're essentially yeah, they're just like they're just like kind of like really like dumb goofy edits of like usually like older shows and such. Mm. And, like when I was younger, I enjoyed watching them too. So sometimes I would just like uh, like recite them with him. <laughs> Stephanie, what's your favorite memory of Craig? Lot, but that's just reminding me <laughs> of how Craig and I. Woo! <laughs> Are we okay? Uh, Craig and I used to recite the Ren and Stimpy show a lot, but I can't remember it anymore. With Uncle. Seth. Oh yeah, I remember that. Like that. What do you know? What she's talking about, Craig? Yeah, he is only you are special. Yeah. I don't remember it though. Stephanie doesn't remember her part. Hey, Joe, do you remember what you used to recite with Craig? You can come over here. Mm -hmm. Remember, He's can you go over right. closer to, <laughs> so you're in the video? <laughs> Craig, oh my goodness. That was a Yogi Bear cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you remember? Well, there's two of them, remember? We used to do. We yeah, I remember two different that? things we used Yogi to do. Thing. Bear on the picnic. Bear. Mm. Yeah, I remember that one. How does that go? Oh, there. Booby. <laughs> what do you say? My name is Boo Boo. No. <laughs> you say Bobo. <laughs> I don't know. I was Boo Boo and the man. Boo Boo and the man. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh, then you do who's on first? No, you don't like that. Oh, I thought I remembered um, you guys oh. doing that. About angry dad. Who <laughs> 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 uh, That was good. That was out of one of his Simpsons. Bart in the Simpsons comic books draws angry dad. You also did that one with baby bear and pop. It's the Father's Day one, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My paw. My junior A bear, age three and a half. Hey, 
Seven and a half. Mm -hmm. Can you say something from that one, Craig? How that goes. When the nice duo boogeyman fills me with fears, and my poor little pinafore is all wet with tears, and my cute little pug nose is all red from crying, who's going hold me and chase me from dying? My Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's one of my favorite cartoons, actually. <laughs> that's a Father's Day episode, too. Yeah, it is. Do you have anything else to say, Craig? You're my dear old dad. <laughs> uh, you kind of emphasized old. <laughs> Didn't you? Huh? Craig just recently realized that Joe has gray hair. <laughs> yeah. like, Your hair is gray. <laughs> well, that, no, that was in Florida. Yeah. Yeah, it was on yeah. Slinky Dog Dad. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, because he saw him, you guys in the camera together. Yeah. All right. Is that all, Craig? Or do you want to say anything else? Do you want to say anything about Bennett? You're my best brother. <laughs> the only one, too. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that Bennett and Craig had a more typical sibling relationship. They used to argue a lot. That's true. Yeah. Right and Steph. The last week. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm a menace. I do like to, I do like to bother people. <laughs> Haley just rolled her eyes at me. <laughs> Do you agree with that, Haley? <laughs> if not her, then the cats. <laughs> Bennett was that pesky brother. It's true. And he liked <laughs> his favorite food was also Craig's nemesis. It's true. Which we can't say the S word. Yeah, we can. <laughs> I already said it once or twice today when I was cooking and made Craig upset. <laughs> it's like Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, do you want to end this session by saying anything? And this is Craig A. Vammer saying, keep on having a great day and happy Father's Day. Good job. Libby, do you want to give Papa his Father's Day present? Okay, hey, no. Why? Because Papa is my father, so he gets a Father's Day present. Yeah. You give it to him, we put it in Grandma's Tupperware oh, to return that. I thought the Tupperware... Penny this, can't wait to see what it is. is <laughs> That's what Penny thinks. It's not cookies. <laughs> is it a cat? Put it together. No. It's not a cat. You sure? Meow. It's a cat. It's a shirt. What's it say? It's upside down. I can't read it. Says, girl, Grandpa, are you having another little sister? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is not a birth announcement. It's not pregnant. <laughs> three granddaughters. <laughs> you never know someday. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'd say thank you for the shirt then. <laughs> thank you very much. Joe, can you tell us what your favorite Father's Day memory is? I I don't know if I had to pin one down, it's probably the, the day that we had been in. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. I can't believe I was born on Father's Day. <laughs> Everybody loves Bennett. <laughs> uh, no, and, and nobody, Father's Day, Mother's Day, nobody's going to be able to pin down a specific memory. I might. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jags. Did you put that together by yourself or did Haley help you? You did it all by yourself. I like it. <laughs> End bug, bug zapper outdoor, mosquito zapper outdoor with LED light. The, Ooh, the there it is. Cellar. There we go. Yep. Arriving on our doorstep very soon. Yes. Is that what it's, oh. No, I'm just saying that. <laughs> Thanks, Bennett. That'll be really good out on the deck. My dog never says please. We just sat down to supper. I was hungry enough to eat Snow White's poison apple. Pass the potatoes, I called out. Ma raised an eyebrow. Mind your manners, Jenny, she scolded. That's no way to ask. Then my pet squeak bird, Jack, piped up. 
I always remember to use the magic words. He said like he had a little halo over his head. Dread that, Jack. Sometimes I wish I were a dog. My dog never says please, and no one thinks a thing about it. Easy life, old Red has got uh, lying in the sun all day, barking at crows and cats, enjoying an occasional scratch. I grab a chicken lane, and as the portal went sailing by, and tore it to it, pretending I was a dog with a bone. Chew with your mouth closed, Jenny girl, Paul said sternly. No one wants to see what's going on inside your mouth. Cutting his chicken into tinsy widow fat bites. I spit out a piece of grizzle and swipe at my mouth. Wish they'd all just leave me alone. Old Red eats with his mouth open. And he never uses a, uses a napkin. They don't pick on him. Why couldn't I be a dog? There were some of Ma's sweet tasting, mouth warming cherry pie for dessert. Mine was gone in less time than it takes a tweak Jack's to tweak Jack's ear. Mmm, -hmm, I said, run, running my tongue over my plate to get the last sticky drops of cherry juice. You sure make the best pie in the world, Ma. How about a second helping? Jenny May Perkins, said Ma. You're hopeless. It's not good matters to take your plate on when one helping the pie ought to be enough for a girl your size. But I'm growing, I said. Wondering why she hadn't noticed that she seems like she only looks at me to see my manners. Anyway, what's wrong with making a plate? It's a sign of respect. Shows how much like you like something. My dog likes plates. And everyone pats him and tells him he's a good boy. Lucky old Red. I excused myself and hightailed it over out of there. Fixing to grab my jumper and, and go outside. But Ma had other ideas. She poked her head inside my room. Seeing how you done with supper, she said, you can get started out on this room of yours. Looks like a tornado went through here. Aw, oh, Ma, I said. I like it that this way. Everything's right, and where can I can see it instead of hiding away in drawers. Ma just gave me one of her looks. The kind that, that would burn a hole through my iron safe. While I was picking up things up, Old Red helped himself to my bed. He scrunched up to the cup in the covers and settled down for a snooze. I scowled. Why don't you get out in the yard and clean up your doghouse? I told him. But he just stretched and rolled over uh, so I could stretch, scratch his belly. What a life he's got. I finished my room, grabbed my jump rope, and headed for the back door, figuring to sneak out quietly before for Ma could see me and think of something else for me to do. I had one foot on the screen door when Jack, that little toddler, started hollering, Ma! He bawled. Jenny's going outside in her bare feet. Jenny May! Ma called. Put something on your feet. Pa's been having a back then back and there's likely to be nails around. First you think you'll go poking one through your foot. <laughs> Shoot, Ma, I said, Shoo. Shoes, shoes crawled my toes. Truth is, I didn't know where my shoes were. <laughs> now that my room was all cleaned up, don't argue with your Ma, Pa said. Go put your shoes on. I let go of the screen door. Old Red must have, have heard it squeal, because all of a sudden he streaked by, almost knocked me over as he pushed it open and leaped outside. I sure didn't notice any shoes on his feet. Don't talk about unfair. Seems to me a dog's life is much better than mine. And the more I thought about the mat the matter I got, till finally I just sort of boiled over. You treat old Red better than you treat me, I yelled, correcting my manners and making me work all the time. I hate wearing your shoes. I want to be a dog. Then I, then I, then try as I might to hold them back. Tears poured out of my eyes and like a dog waterfall. Ma hurried over and laid her hand hand on my shoulder. Jack snickered, but Pa shut him up with a look. Pa scratched his head. 
You want to be a dog? Yup, I said, still sniffing. I sure do. And that's how I died. Jenny Mae Perkins ended up sleeping in a doghouse and begging for scraps. Old Red's real good about sharing thought, though. I think he's even giving me some, some of his fleas. But I do miss Ma's cooking. Right now I hear pork chops sizzling through the open window. Ma must be getting supper ready. Sure does smell good. Maybe she'll save me a bone with a little meat on it. There's a lot of black clouds coming our way. Looks like it might rain. Hmm, I wonder if this doghouse leaks. <laughs> pa said I can go back about being my dream myself anytime. I have a mind to. So maybe I'll just saunter on in and wash up for supper. But if that brother of mine dares to say even one tinsy little word, why, I must just hum him off, hum him off and bite him off the leg. <laughs> and this is Craigie Farrer saying, keep on having a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow at the Amanda Colonies.